just want to know what you understand by the term or what you understand by what we are speaking about all these days. So you can either send that in the chat or uh, you can voice out. Or if you don't have any idea, you can at least say no idea or don't know whatever. Generative AI is something uh, that allows you to give input and okay. uh, artificial intelligence itself uh, takes the data that is available in the open market and uh, generates the particular topic such as images or maybe text or documents upon our requirement and the request that we have given. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. So that is the that is the word. The the word generative that, that tells you everything. So it's not a complicated thing. So generative AI is all about generating things. Okay. Now the A we had before this, okay, we call them as a descriptive AI or discriminative AI, okay, or even predictive AI. Okay. So those things, okay. Let me maybe let me check if we have an exam image of it. Okay. Look at this. Okay, now look at this. So uh, now, now this image uh, tells you what the AI we had before. For example, generally AI is all about thinking and taking decision, right? For example, uh, if, if you take AC, okay, air conditioner, even, even that can be called as an AI system because it thinks and takes decision. You set a temperature, Okay, it compares the temperature with the room temperature and decides whether the, the compressor have to be made on or off. So there is thinking and taking decision. That is what is intelligence is actually. Intelligence is, is, is for the living beings. All non-living things, they don't have intelligence. Okay, so this intelligence uh, is given to the machines through artificial ways. That is what we generally call as AI. Okay, through some technology, through some ways, we give this intelligence to systems. Generally, we call that AI. Now, this AI, the level of AI, uh, no, it's that's what gives you different uh, now names of different technologies. For example, start with uh, okay. Actually, AI has been there for more than 50, 60 years since the time of Star Wars. You can say okay, from the time when we had computers, around 1950s, we had these chips coming up. S since then. We have been having AI among us, but in you know very very lower levels. Uh, we had we 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 had robots. Okay, in uh, more than fifty years back, we had these robotic arms in industries. You know, which were working on uh, car manufacturing plants and all that. So so AI has been a part of human life for more than fifty years. But the thing is, uh, uh, AI is AI is objective was to mimic humans, like the human intelligence. But before this Gen AI, if you, if you ask whether did we achieve the level of intelligence humans had, no, okay? We had something called, uh, we can call it as uh, okay, rule-based AI, okay? The traditional AI we had before Gen AI, we can call it as rule-based AI. Now, the, the, the term says it. Rule-based means you, you give some conditions, you, you define certain things and based on whatever you define it lacked accordingly. For example, you can you can think of it like using if condition in a program. Okay, use if condition, if if this happens, do this. If this doesn't happen, do this. So similar to this, the AI system we had before was rule based. Okay, you define a set of rules and it works accordingly. Now coming to this, okay, this one, uh, we can say uh, the actual the boom of AI, okay, the actual boom of AI, it started around uh, 1990s, okay. Uh, that is when uh, the term machine learning came into play. Actually, it was there before, but that is when the people you know, gave interest to the term called machine learning. Now, learning is what differs the AI we have now and the AI we had before 1980s. Okay, what is learning basically? What is learning basically? When I say I learned something, what do you mean by that? See, learning happens in two ways. Okay, learning happens in two ways. One is uh, through instructions. Okay, someone can, 
someone can teach you okay they can they will teach you they'll give you inputs on what things are that is one set of learning the other one is through experience okay so that is what was given importance after 1980s learning through experience okay the one is learning through given some data learning through some uh, rules that is one thing the other, other one is learning through experience now machine learning is all about mimic, mimicking the le- learning capabilities of humans in a sense uh, like how humans learn from experience for example let's say <clears throat> uh okay let's say there, there are a group of boys uh, who are playing cricket okay now let's say they are they, this is the first first time they are playing and someone hits a ball and uh, the ball hits a window uh, glass and the glass broke breaks now as soon as this happens uh, let's say the 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 boy who hit uh, his father uh, come and beats him and uh, maybe scolds him or whatever now this is something he la- this is some learning that's happening there so this boy will come to know okay this is something i shouldn't do i should avoid hitting the ball uh, on the i mean the window or something so so this is what is hap- learning from experience now that is what people were started giving importance when machine learning came into play okay uh, in fact we have a, uh, we have a uh, separate term for it called reinforcement learning but let me not go deep into it like i don't want to go, go deep into what is machine learning deep learning all that because our focus on gen ai okay so learning okay of the machine it has been there uh, since 1980s 1990s now uh, the difference between gen ai which came around let's say 2014 or the machine learning things okay let, let me do something let me maybe i should i'll just uh, draw something okay so we had we had rule based ai okay rule based ai and then we had okay we, i'll di- i'll divide this into three okay machine learning okay these are two things which were which we are very uh, now familiar about before gen ai a rule based ai is simple okay it's like using if conditions you uh, you define conditions what has to be and what not has to be done based on the rules you define the system will work that is uh, rule based machine learning it's again it uses previous data okay it uses previous data or that is happening currently what is happening currently to learn from it to learn from it and gain knowledge okay so these are the two important uh, ai systems we have been uh, using before gen ai part now with generative ai what happens is uh, as you were saying as people you were saying it's about generating things let me show an example maybe I'll, i'll maybe that will be a simple okay let's see whether the google has the old okay let me try this uh, translate okay let me try this if it's uh... okay we have tamil how most of you are from tamil right anyone here who don't understand tamil everyone is from tamil background isn't it okay me okay yeah here yeah. okay one of you anyways i'll just show you um, maybe okay i'll show you okay now, 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 now look at this now look at this uh, don't offend okay now what the hell is something we use often now uh, at least i'm not using f word here so what the hell is uh, the actual if you if you try to translate it actually as the words mean uh, or at least if you if you tried this let's say 3 years back or 4 years back what you will be seeing here is something like narakathila uh, something you know the, the meaning of hell is uh, the opposite of heaven right narakathil in tamil we call it narakathil so i have tried it actually okay sometimes uh, you know if you try if you have tried this before 3 years back 4 years back before google integrated this gemini thing into this what you will be seeing here is narakathila something the ai system okay before what is there in google now doesn't understand on what context you are actually speaking okay it's it's more like it will just translate it it will translate based on how it is trained on okay now with all this ai systems actually after google has integrated gen, gen ai with uh, 
I mean, Gemini AI with uh, Google engine, it's able to understand what context you are actually trying to say things. Okay, that's what ChatGPT does for you. Even ChatGPT uh, does the same thing. Okay, if you just go to ChatGPT and ask, uh, what the hell, uh, it won't. It won't actually just give you the uh, just the translation. Okay, it'll give you what you're actually coming to say. Now, how does this happen? How did it? How is it able to do this? Now, before 2017 and 2018, uh, AI systems were not able to do this. AI systems were were not actually artificially intelligent. They were intelligent in, in some way, but they're not close to humans. But now with now with all this uh, ChatGPT and all that, they were able to understand what they're coming to say, right? How did it happen? Oh, I'm just asking this question. How do you think this happened? How are the systems which are actually intelligent? How are those systems uh, are close to humans now? Why did we why didn't we have the systems before uh, 2014, 2015? You, you get my question? How is it Google able to identify this? I mean, I mean the meaning of this, but not uh, not before 2018 and 2017. In fact, just two years back, if you tried this. It showed me only, I think, Naragdala or something. Maybe I should go with, uh, maybe, let me try with incognito. Because, uh, yeah, come on. Okay, it's, it's saying it. Anyways, so what, what do you think, so? How is it, how does it happen? How is it, it how is like that? Okay, yeah, of course it's technology development. I mean, how the systems are so intelligent now? They have given so much data and they have trained their artificial intelligence in that way. Exactly, exactly, that's the point, that's the point. So that is the point actually. So it all depends on how much data the things were actually trained on. Now, if you compare, uh, if you ask me, if you compare the AI systems uh, before Gen AI, and uh, AIS, which is which is now like ChatGPT and all that, it's like it's like this circle, and I mean, more, I can say more than that. Now this is a, you can say this is Gen AI, and I'll say this is the AI which is, which had before this. The reason being, okay, uh, the current AI systems were trained on billions of parameters and even trillions of parameters, uh, data. In fact, okay, data. Now those data is what gave these things uh, the intelligence. Now you can you can think of a, a child, for example. Okay, let me use ChatGPT for that. You can use ChatGPT itself for the same thing. For example, okay, what is it? Okay, okay. For example, I'll say if I say what is black hole. Okay. Okay, I don't know. Okay, it's it's it should be wrong. What's black hole? What is black hole? Okay. Okay, so it's giving it's giving a, a lot of things now. Okay, it's giving a lot of uh, definition for that. Now, how will a three-year? I mean, I don't know whether a three-year child knows about it. Let's say uh explain it okay imagine you are okay imagine you are a seven year old child seven year old kid okay okay now you, you see this so now this is the difference see now the ai system now it's able to change itself change itself as a seven year old kid okay and it is answering you how a seven year old kid will answer if, if he's asking if he's being asked and what's black hole okay he says like it's a giant vacuum cleaner in space uh, that is so strong no that's what that's what a that's what a, a kid will understand evo now the reason the reason why the kid will understand is because of the information he had the information he had will be very limited but the same question if it is posted to, uh, let's say, uh, I will say you are, uh, what I say, a physicist. Uh, 
so he will answer in a way uh, more in a more technical way right so maybe he may give other uh, examples uh, with technical terms and all that okay so that is what the current systems are so the reason why i want to show you this is because of the huge amount of data that is being used okay even now uh, for training the systems the ai systems are like this okay the ai system we had this is like this and now we have this which is more like human it's, it's close to humans in in some in some cases we can say it uh, it you know exceeds human levels so that is what gen ai is and as as you were saying systems are able to generate things previously we had something like for example uh, let me give you another example for that okay for example previously we had system we call them as descriptive okay you can take an example of a doctor for example there are also different levels as descriptive we say descriptive uh, we say diagnostic okay and then we say something called predictive predictive and prescriptive so let me go through this quickly because you should know this and then now we have generative okay generative now descriptive means let's say you 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 go to you let's okay fine you you take uh, all data from a, let's say revenue data of a company you audit it and then you describe what is the profit and loss okay you 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 describe what is given in the data that is descriptive and diagnostic is all about identifying what the problem is for example for example uh, you you found out okay you find out where, that this company is incurring a loss for the past one year okay if you if for example in case of a medical thing descriptive is about uh, explaining or getting the lab results and diagnostic is about uh, and trying to understand what the disease what the problem with the patient is and then you say predictive in in this case let's say if you go to if you go to doctor what will he say based on the diagnosis he will say okay say so we have diagnosis for you and based on the diagnosis we'll say for example if someone has a cancer or something the cancer is diagnosed so what they will say see uh, based on the diagnosis we'll say you'll be living for another few years maybe so that's the predicted they say this is what will happen in future because of the diagnosis that's predictive and then they say prescriptive next level is prescriptive after diagnosing what the problem is and then predicting what will happen in the future they will prescribe something either to stop the prediction okay for example if <clears throat> there's a problem with your let's say if you, if there's a blockage in your heart they will have predict they will they will predict like say if you continue like this uh, you you will have heart attack maybe or that 5 6 years then they will say okay we prescribe this take this tablets okay uh, take this medication and you you have to follow up with uh, you 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 have to follow up a, a, a good diet routine uh, you have to follow up with good physical systems so the, that is prescriptive okay prescribing now these are the four levels of ai we had before okay uh, there there was generation but still uh, these systems were not able to actually generate new things based on these learnings okay now after this large amount of data training the systems are able to generate things now based on these learnings for example okay i'm just giving you a now this is just uh, an example okay let's say now we we have we have cancers you know we have cancer problem everywhere now we can make use of the genai systems of course they are trying i guess we can use the genai systems now based on the all the learnings uh learnings of the previous uh, let's say 50 years on cancer data okay the genai systems can be okay they will be in of course they will be able to come up with a good medical formula okay they can treat cancer now that is what uh, generic ai is all about now prescription is all about uh, prescribing something which humans already have for example humans would have worked on different tablets for cancer patients and they they would have you know indexed it now and the doctor would prescribe okay okay you have to take this tablet and all that now when it comes to generative ai the ai systems will be able to create own medical formula okay for based on the learnings of all the previous years 
and previous learnings, not just not just uh, uh, the data of the patients, even the data of the uh, previous medical history, for example, what the previous medicine they were giving and how it affected people. So all this can data can be fed and the system will be able to generate new formulae, okay, for uh, the, med the for the medicine. Now that is what we are speaking about. So generative AI is all about generate new things, just like how humans uh, generate things. Okay, they, we can think of, we can create our own voice, we can think uh, in our own way. Okay, we can draw on our own. Okay, so that is what it is. Now there is also other thing uh, when people you know, say about generative AI. See previously, previously, okay, uh, when people are designing AI systems, now this will this is more important. I want you to understand this. Previously, when people were designing AI systems, they were designing AI systems particularly for a specific task. For example, let's say, uh, okay, we were doing a project uh, like like three four years back. What we were doing was uh, uh, we were creating uh, uh, a system, okay, which will identify elephants uh, crossing the tracks. That was a use case actually. That's a problem statement. The problem statement was. Uh, elephants, uh, you know, uh, they die when they cross railway tracks and the, the trains hit them and uh, many elephants die because of that. So we designed a simple you know, college project or something so where the, the camera will be able to identify elephants okay, on the railway tracks if they come and it will send an alert to the trains so that they will slow down the train or at least they will stop the train this is especially during the night times, okay, not during the daytime, especially at, at the dark. Now, if you take this example, I, 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 we create an AI system, obviously, but this AI system is focused on identifying elephants. So what we, we what we did, we took all the we we took a lot of images of the elephants, thousands of images of elephants. We trained the system to identify elephants and make this work. Now this is fine. Of course, this is an AI system, but if you Take this camera and bring in some, let's say a dolphin or a whale or a, let's say a, a dog or something, the system won't be able to identify what it is. So this, these, the AI systems before Gen A were more focused on the tasks they were intended to build. But with Gen AI, okay, the systems are more general like humans. Okay, for example, the, the AI system we have now, they know many things. They have a lot of things. Okay, uh, for example, uh, it's not like they focus on only one stuff or something. They can they know many things. Uh, if you ask them, uh, okay, convert this to okay, convert this to I don't know. So this English I don't know local Tamil. Sorry, local Tamil. Uh, okay. Okay, now this is, uh, so basically it knows Tamil also now, okay, and if you ask it, we can ask it like, uh, is it pure Tamil? Okay, it's like, it's like pure Tamil, okay. Use, what did you say actually, is it look like, okay, use Tanglish, I don't know, I don't know whether it's understand Tanglish, so use Tanglish, I say use Tanglish, okay. You see that? For black hole, no, so now our idea, our area in space, there are going, young, young gravity, rumba, strong, are going, all right. Okay, so you understand the point. So generative AI are more general now. Okay, they know many things. They are not focused on only one particular thing. Now, what is happening because of it? What's the advantage of this? The advantage of this is you don't have to train them, uh, you know, uh, for in for many tasks. For example. You have a system, okay. You have an A system, okay. Now, if, you, if previously I have to send a lot of data, I have to send a lot of data to it and then train it. After training, I can deploy the A system and make use of it. This was the previous case, this was happening before. Now, you can consider the systems to be already trained. The systems are already trained now, you don't have to train them. For most of the cases, of course, there is some training needed in certain cases, but in most of the cases, this AI system is already trained, like ChatGPT or Gemini AI or, or, or Meta's, you know, Llama. All these are already trained. What do you have to do? You just 
take the systems, deploy in our, in your projects. That's it. That's what we do in most cases. So there's not much training required for the new AI systems that is being deployed uh, in many projects now. Okay, so that is one of the difference. And next thing I want to show is how important it is. Why should we worry about uh, Gen AI now? See, uh, I'll, I'll show you. I Actually, if you have uh, went to the website I showed you, uh, uh, I, I showed this example to even certain people yesterday in Hackathon. I think, how many of you are from Hackathon here? From Mr. is Hackathon? Anyone from Mr. Hackathon here? Okay, many. Okay, fine. So I, I, I show them this example. So, so there is a website called diamondizen.ai. See, this website, uh, it's basically an AI website, which means they have integrated chat GPT with it. Okay, they have, this, this is a normal, web, normal website, but they have uh, integrated chat GPT at the back end. Now, what they do is, okay, what they do is, if you give a business idea, okay, they will, uh, you can just give a small discussion about what your business idea is about. And uh, if you have some files to be chosen, you send it. They will generate you this uh, business overview, what the market is you have to do, how you can launch the business and scale it, or how you can raise capital. So all this report, they will give you as a PDF. Okay. Now, now look at the implications of it. For example, okay, let me show you how much they uh, charge. Okay, that is... And if you go to the pricing plans, okay, see this. Okay, now this is the pricing plans uh, of the website. They will give you a simple report, a very very simple report for free. Okay, they will give you uh, whether the business idea is good or not, how it will uh, perform, and some idea previews, and uh, that's it. But if you want a complete report, Okay, and how you want to scale the business from starting to beginning, how you can raise capitals, how you want to actually start you know, developing the business, a complete report, you have to obviously pay them this. Now, this is the model of all the AI tools that are being, being you know, developed in the market. You go to anything, even ChatGPT, they charge you $20 per month, isn't it? And for example, if you go to InVideo, which is, uh, you know, which, which generates video, even they charge you uh, certain uh, rising. They they charge you like I mean twenty dollars something for per month, and there are systems like which can actually generate uh, audios like Level Labs. Okay, it's a very good thing. Level Labs and Level Labs will be able to generate human like audio basically. And if you go to the pricing, obviously they will uh, they will charge you. You see this? Okay. Okay, you see this? So they're charging you this much. Now the point here is the point here is uh, AI systems are the trend, okay? Are the market, are the the height in the market now? So if you are able to develop AI systems, if if you are able to come up with a good idea, okay, of developing AI system, that is what people are looking at. Investors are looking at. Uh, see, ChatGPT came around 2018, 2017 that way. Like I think uh, they launched it in 2018, but I think they started developing it with GPT-2, GPT-3.4, 3.5, and all that since 2014, okay? But after Char GPT, especially after the launch, after Corona especially, there are thousands of uh, applications which, which came, you know, uh, after, similar to that. Now, uh, I had a simple image, let me check you. Yeah, look at this. Now look at this. So all these are different AI websites we have on the market for different applications. Okay, we have CC Level Labs here. So all these websites will help you on you know speech and voice recognitions, you know generating music. Okay, uh, I hope you would have seen uh, as recent movies. Uh, they have used Gen AI for uh, I mean singing like SPB, right? Which movie is it? I don't know. I, uh, I don't know which movie it is. They they used the voice of uh, uh, SPB, and I think, I don't know which movie it is. Uh, it was like SPB. The song was like you now being sung by SPB. I, I even, even I think in the recent movie, I, I think, Goat, right? Uh, what is her name? I don't know. Ilya Raja's uh, daughter. 
but okay okay i think her voice is a, a generated so basically people are looking at ai tools okay ai tools is the market even this diamond is in thing even this diamond is in uh, stuff i showed you uh, see they developed it i think using some uh, look at this they just developed this using like 15000 rupees okay just invested 15000 rupees with developing the uh, thing see it's a, it's a basic site if you look at the website it's a very basic site not so complicated but the thing is they integrated chat gpt with it okay uh, because of the integration the this website becomes a enabled and it got sold for 1.2 crores in just one year after development so there are many startups okay we are which are looking at you know uh, investing on these ai tools if you are able to actually uh, think of a use, use case okay uh, either it can it can if it is able to penetrate the market uh, if it has the potential to penetrate the market there are investors available okay who are ready to fund you so the point here is uh, the the technology is simple okay that is what we actually we are going to teach okay the, actually there's a boot camp coming up and those are uh, interested can go for it uh, i'll show you that maybe on so the technology is simple okay uh, uh, i'll i can now i show you how to develop a simple ai tool using no code no code tools uh, and if you use python it is really easy to develop ai tool for different applications but the thing is you have to think of a good use case that is what the point is okay it's not si a single guy can't think of many applications uh, if you learn the technology used to develop ai tools and if you're able to apply that uh, on a good use case you can really you can very well become a, you know like uh, uh, an entrepreneur okay who have developed a good ai tool to reach the market okay so think of it so let's let's start into doing things now as i told you i want you to uh, i don't want to leave you just like that i want to show you how to develop a simple ai tool using something called mit app inventor i'll show you the steps you can just follow through okay i'll also share the video uh, or this video uh, maybe you can watch it back and develop it yeah, on yourself now this is without using no code tools and this this is very minimal okay this is not advanced it's a very minimal uh, uh, tool which is used for developing uh, mobile apps without any coding okay i'll tell you i'll just show you the steps mit app inventor is a website developed by students actually it was developed by mit students from uh, uh, us massachusetts of technology so they developed it like 15 years back i remember using this website for developing my uh, college project app so more than 15 years back they developed it and it's still in use and it has benefited a lot of people uh, not just for this i wanted to go and explore this uh, website there are a lot of uh, competitions they are you know conducting uh, and it is benefiting school students a lot they out of this 100 million apps that is being built many will be from school students because uh, the easy right they are, first of all they are easy and second many schools are integrating this as a as a part of the curriculum in their uh, subjects you can see that here even here in schools uh, in chennai okay so now learning can happen at any time so even if you are new to the technology i i request you you know those are new to programming or whatever to go to this website and go through different examples that is uh, giving here they have they have tutorials also you can go through that but let me show you from my side
Hey, uh, I'm hey, sorry. I don't know what happened. Uh, all of a sudden, I don't know. Okay, I think I closed this window instead of. Uh, yeah. Okay, can you guys hear me? Sorry. Yes. Uh, okay, you can watch my. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Fine. I don't know. I don't know how we closed it all of a sudden. Anyways, so what is a multi-model? I was asking this question. Generally, we use the word models for uh, this Jenna thing, right? So, what is a multi-model? If you know, fine. Otherwise, I'll, I'll go through it. Okay, fine. Uh, so, those who are, uh, you, can, you can mute yourself if you don't want to speak. Uh, I request you to mute yourself. You don't want to speak, please. Okay. Okay. Let me mute myself. Mute you myself. One second. Okay. Fine. Fine. So there are few things. I. I mean, there are few terms you need to know. One is uh, LLMs. Now all these AI systems we call them LLMs. Okay. LLMs. LLM means large language model. It's, it's quite understandable. Large language model. Now, ChatGPT uh, was the first one, okay, I'll say, okay, which came under this category, large language model, because it's trained on a lot of things. Actually, before the, there, was, there, there were many few things that came before ChatGPT, but the public came to know about these things only after ChatGPT. So, I'll say, uh, ChatGPT is the first thing which came uh, under this name to the public uh, in, in major case. So LLMs, large language models. Now LLMs can generate text. Okay, if if a model can generate only text, we just call it you no know, uh, text model. Okay, those systems we can generate text, audio. Okay, we can generate image, and even uh, it, which has vision capabilities. We call these models as multi models. These are multi models. If a model, if an AI, AI tool can generate all these things, we call that as a multi model. Okay, that is a multi model. Is not, not like wide range, and then these are the things. Okay, text, audio, image, it has vision capabilities. Now, Charge GPT is all these things. Charge GPT is a multi model. Uh, let me show you. For example, if I go to who was the one developed ChatGPT? ChatGPT is developed by was developed by OpenAI. Okay, OpenAI is a company which developed ChatGPT. Now ChatGPT is a multi-model, <clears throat> which means it can. Uh, I'll show you the. I'll show you what other things they have. They have some documentation, or I'll say. Okay, I'll I'll go with this. Uh, so OpenAI pricing. Now look at this. So, in the ChatGPT 4.0, we can say that's what we use recently. If you go to ChatGPT here, what you're using here is ChatGPT 4.0, the recent one. Okay, what are you using here? Now, ChatGPT 4.0 is a multi model, okay, uh, which can generate uh, many things. Okay, uh, it can generate text, even you can even upload data here, right? See, you can even upload data here, upload uh, files from here and make it work. And they are given pricing here. I'll explain the pricing later. Okay, let me not go not go into it. Now, then we have mini, okay, which is same as thing, but it is lesser lesser cost. They released this thing recently, yesterday. They released the new model yesterday. Now, this has this is more trained on reason capabilities and mathematics. They just released this yesterday, okay, O1, open A O1, yesterday or day before yesterday, I guess, and it became a very good uh, hype. So this model was trained on reasoning capabilities, especially mathematics. Okay, so the people who are working on data science and all they'll be able to use it very nicely. And then we have something called. Uh, let me show this. There is a normal ones. We have some code interpreters which work on uh, coding stuff. Then we have some image models. Okay, you must have heard about DALI. DALI is now paid. Previously, I think you were able to generate few images without paying anything. 
So Dali is an image model. So if you give some prompt, <coughs> it will generate an image. Then we have audio models. <coughs> Whisper is for transcription. Okay, so we can convert uh, uh, English to many languages or even many languages in English. And then we have audio, okay, text to speech. This is text to speech. TTS is text to speech. That is, you give some, uh, you give some text that will be generated as a voice. So that is TTS models. Then there are many other models available. So the, the point here is ChatGPT <coughs> is a multi model. This is all multi models. Then we even have Gemini. Okay, Gemini is from whom? Gemini AI is the other one. Even this is a multi model. Okay, Google Gemini. Uh, then we have Facebook's Llama. Now these are three main players in the in the uh, market. Okay, the main three players in the market are uh, ChatGPT, which is Open AI, and then we have Gemini AI. Okay, Gen Gemini AI. Then we have Llama is Facebook's. Now Llama is an open source model. I want you to make note of this actually. Okay, uh, this one. I want you to make note of this. Okay, uh, open source models. Okay. Open source models are free to use. Okay, you don't have to pay them anything. Uh, yeah, Copilot is ChatGPT. Copilot comes is a ChatGPT basically. Now this is the this is actually what people are looking at. Open source models. Now there is a website called Hugging Face. Let me show you. Okay, I think the session will get over on all this information itself. Anyways. Now, Hugging Face is a is a platform where you can go and check out all the models which are available for open source. In in the sense, you don't have to pay them. In case of uh, ChatGPT, you know, ChatGPT, you can see here they are they're charging you. You see this? All these are charges they give you. It's like it's like they're charging. Okay, let me explain that to you. I'll explain what this means actually. See, if you're using ChatGPT 4.0, which is the advanced one. They will charge you five dollars for one million input tokens. In 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 simple words, one million tokens. Now tokens in me, which me tokens means actually it's other terms for counting the number of words. Thousand tokens is equal to seven fifty words. Okay, thousand tokens is equal to seven fifty words. So in this case, you can generate up to seven point five lakh words. Okay, like how we ask ChatGPT here. Okay. You can integrate ChatGPT with a website, with a website, and then use it for generating up to 7.5 lakh words for five dollars. That is what which means. And in this in this case, if you want to integrate ChatGPT with your website, you have to recharge for at least five dollars. For minimum five dollars, only then you'll be able to use. Uh, sometime back they were giving some free credits. I think they were giving eighteen dollars credit. I'll show you that. I'll show that also. Okay, open a platform. I show you how I use it. I I recharge and make use of it. Okay, okay, not this. So, um. See, I want to show you all of this because you should get an idea about how things work in this uh, world. I mean, Gen AI world. Okay, now look at this. So this is my open AI's login actually. Okay, other than ChatGPT, you have something called API login. This is the API login. Okay, it's not a login. Let me log in. Okay. Okay, so if you come to dashboard here, uh, they'll have something called usage. I'll show you how much I have used. Uh, so I recharged for five dollars last year November. Okay, I recharged it the the thing for five dollars last year five dollars, and it's almost about to expire. There's only one more month I can use make use of this five dollars, and I used only one point sixty dollars, and I have been using this for long long time. Uh, I have been using this uh, account for uh, I mean training students, and see. Even if five dollars is high, the, the reason why I want to show you this is even if it reaches a five dollars, which is like 400 rupees, you can use it for generating a lot of stuff. You can see here, for example, I can uh, I, I can I have used it for uh, uh, okay, 
Okay, I have used it for images. Okay, is it showing only for this month? Okay. Okay, just showing for only one month. And I've used GPT-4, GPT-4 mini. And if you look at uh, August month, I've used it for generating images also. I, I made, I generated two images. Okay. Yeah, I have two images using this of a size 2 to 2 to 6. I have used it for even uh, generating voice, but not in August, I guess. So basically, the point I want you to understand here is ChatGPT charges you. Okay, you can't get the service for free if you want to integrate it in your website. Hanuman AI. Okay, even that is there. Let me check it. So the other option you have is Gemini. Okay, now Gemini, even uh, they won't charge you for some time. Uh, there's something Google AI Studio. Let me show you that Google AI Studio. And if you go inside that, okay. So if you go to Google AI Studio, even this can be used similar to ChatGPT. If you want to ask something, you can ask it. Uh, now Google AI Studio, Google Google has different models under Gemini. There are multiple models. You can see here the model selected here Gemini 1.5 Flash. Maybe I should show you that one second. So Gemini AI. Okay. Now look at this. Look at this. So Gemini 1.5 Flash is that it's a multi model. You can use it for generating images, uh, uh, text. Uh, even you can send images and ask questions on that. Now the the highlight is you can use it for, use it for free for some time. You can send up to fifteen requests per minute, which is more for us. Which is again, which is which is actually good for us. If you're not developing a website uh, for public, if you are creating a tool, AI tool for only your use or maybe your organization use, this is more than enough. If fifteen requests per minute is Hi again. I I'm not, I'm, I may be asking maybe five questions per minute. Okay. So if you want to develop an AI tool, okay, uh, which is free of cost, my suggestion is to go for Gemini 1.5 Flash. And that is what we'll be using in Gen AI Bootcamp, uh, which we are starting, okay, in the upcoming week. So I'll be telling you how to integrate Gemini AI with Python and I'll tell you how to use it. The other one is Llama. Llama is completely free to use. Uh, so they have released Llama 3.1 and in, in Gemini they have multiple models you can see here if you if you go to 1.5 Pro it is more uh, <clears throat> intelligent but even there even that they are giving you for free but you can only send two requests per minute so if you're using only for yourself again this is okay okay and Llama is actually an open source model from Meta okay and uh, see there are trade-offs trade -offs, there are certain things you have to bear when it comes to uh, open source models one thing is as as soon as far as i have seen okay in my experience uh Jazz gpt is more intelligent okay uh, as of i have seen okay uh, compared to gemini ai or uh, llama Jazz gpt is more intelligent and if you ask me it is worth paying them for the intelligence uh, chat GPT has. Okay. But let's say, okay, you don't want that much intelligence. Okay. You don't want a high intelligence system. You may, you may, you may be designing something which is, which requires only less level of intelligence, not, not much thinking, uh, not much reasoning. In that case, I suggest you to go for Gemini AI. Gemini actually, <laughs> it's actually uh, compared to Llama and Chargery, it's poor and intelligent. Sometimes, you know, it gives you answers which is so irrelevant. So, but since it is free and easy to integrate with, I, I show people how to make use of it. So, if you want to, if you want more intelligence, at the same time, something free, you have to go for Llama 3.1. Llama 3.2, I think, is released now. And they have different uh, models. They have trained it with 8 billion parameters. There's one model. They have trained with, there's one more thing, 70 billion models. Four billion. So the, the, the trade-off here is, the trade-off here is, now ChatGPT, you don't have to train it first of all. And then you don't have to download anything, store it in a system, and then uh, create, uh, uh, upload it in a website or something. You don't have to do that with ChatGPT. 
you can straight away integrate with simple commands and make use of it. But when it comes to Llama, you have to download the model. <clears throat> it requires, so for example, this may require 20 GB, 30 GB something. I don't know how much this model is. So it, it, it has, you have downloaded for so much of GB, then you have to train it and then deploy it in your website. Now this requires more uh, work, not easy as ChatGPT, but still, uh, if you are building a product, okay, which uh, you want it to be free, okay, you want to uh, re generate revenue, not from subscription, but some other thing, you, you better go with Llama. And that is it. These are three main players. Now coming to hugging face, how's the hugging face? A hugging face is a play. It's it's a place where you can find all other models, all models, okay, which are open source. Uh, we can you can use hugging face interface uh, for using even ChatGPT for free. Now the best part is the best part is hugging face. You no, know, they filter. You can filter models based on whatever you want to do. For example, you can select models which which do only for example uh, text generation. And you can select it, and they listed all the models, all these different models, uh, which can you now do text generation. Or you can say, I want to create a model which is which is good for quiz, for quiz, for generating quiz. In that case, you can go for something called question answering models. You see this here. Now these these models will would have been trained very well for question and answering purpose. So these different models work on that way. Similarly, you can search different, for example, for I want models for text to speech, text to audio, audio to audio. So there are different things available here. That's the best part of uh, Hugging Face. And the other thing is, as I told you, Hugging Face can be integrated in your Python and you can use these models for free. The only uh, the drawback uh, is now when you integrate ChatGPT straight away, uh, it, it's, it shows more intelligence. But when you integrate charge, the same charge GPT with uh, hugging face, I don't know, for some reason, uh, the intelligence is lesser, but still, you know, not that that bad, okay? You can even try different models here. For example, if you want to try different things, for example, uh, image generation, I guess image generation. This is about images. And let's say I want to, like a text to image. Let's try this. I want to try this. For example, if you want to try this, I can say it by saying, okay, there are certain models which you can try straight away. Let me try if you have this. Let's see if it's, a, okay, you see this as something, in, there's something inference AI. Inference API can be used for uh, trying the model straight away. For example, let's say, uh, I'll say something like uh, a dog, okay, a dog with wings. So let's see if it's able to generate it. So compute, okay, it's asking me to log in. Uh, I don't remember the password. Okay, fine, okay, let me see. It, you can actually try things. Once you log in, you can just try it here and it will generate whatever you're asking. Now, the reason why ha they have something like this is, you can try different models and see which are accurate. For example, if I ask a dog with wings like this, okay, there are certain models which will give you output like a cartoonistic image. It won't give you real images. It will give you a cartoonistic image of a dog with wings. But certain models will give you an actual image of a dog with real kind of wings. So you can choose the model which you want to after you try. So this really helps. Okay, for those of you who want to try different models and make use of it, they can make use. Of, uh, they can try this inference API. And then there's something called lang chain. Now this is what is very very important. I'll be using this in the in the bootcamp. Lang chain is for building actual product with many models together. For example, let's say you have you want to use ChatGPT also. You want to use uh, Gemini also. You want to use Open Llama also, and you want to use some other models from Hugging Face also. You want to Type all that and let's say you have a website which does many things and for different things you want to use different models, then chat Langchain is the option. Okay, Langchain makes you know it's basically it's like 
language, you know, chain. You chain different language models, basically. You chain them together and bring up a, a, a superb uh, website. So I'll cover this also uh, in the upcoming uh, bootcamp. So these are the main things you need to learn. One thing, when you want to develop an AI tool, you should first of all know how to integrate uh, uh, a ChatGPT or Gemini AI or Llama with your Python code. Then you should know how to use Hugging Face, then Langchain. These are the prerequisites. Now, if you want to uh, develop a tool based on AI, because all those things give you different perspectives, different ideas. And once you know how to develop uh, things with these tools, you'll be able to finalize at least what you want to actually come up with in the end. Okay, fine. Now coming to this, I think that's enough of uh, all the theory part. Okay, I hope the information given here is enough for now. Let me show you, once I can come back here, I'll show you how to develop a simple tool. So let me create a new project. Let me name it as uh, Gen AI app, whatever. So this, as I told you, MIT app inventor can be used for generating creating AI tools, I mean, creating any app actually in that case, but I'm going to create a, a new AI tool. Actually, I want to generate text as well as uh, images. And let's say, uh, okay, let's, and let's, let's design it. So for example, if you want to create an AI tool, it should actually basically have, uh, okay, let's say this is the, this is the uh, phone you have, mobile phone. So you want to have some, you want to ask questions here. Then you want to ask, have a button, and then you'll have some space here where you want to generate the text. This is the output, right? You want to have the output here, and you want to give the input, whatever question you want to ask. Or if you want to even ask to generate text or image, you can do that. Then you want to have a button, okay? So what I will do here, what I can do here, I'll, I'll design it in the way. For example, I want to have a button. See, I'll add a button here. Then I want to add a text box, right? This is a text box basically. So I'll search for text box here. I'll add a text box. And then I want to add some box for adding, getting response. And what I will get here is a text basically, right? I'll get some text as a response from ChatGPT or something. And for that, I will be using labels. See, uh, guys, I'm going you now uh, in a fast way. The, the reason being, I have a video on this completely. I'll show you that also. Uh, just for uh, you know, letting you know how the flow works, I want to show you this. Okay, fine. And also, I want you to know how easy it is to you know generate simple AI tools using this uh, MIT App Inventor. Anyways, so let me name it, name this button as Send. I'll just name the Send button. I'll just I can just change its properties. Like for example, I can make it uh, orange, uh, and I can for the example this label I can just. Okay, I'm sorry. For now, I'll just make it as no response. And then I want to arrange it. Like for arranging, I can I can choose different options here. For example, the cylindrical horizontal arrangement. Horizontal means you arrange things horizontally. So I'll just say fill the parent, which means it it comes full. Actually, I want the the full screen okay to be aligned vertically in in the bottom space. If I select bottom, everything will be aligned uh, at the bottom. That way, it will be easy for us. So I'll have a text box here, and then the button here. And then, uh, okay, let's say, let's extend the, I mean, increase the width of uh, the text box to 80%. I'll just extend the width, 80%. You see this, it got extended. Then I also I want to actually have a vertical arrangement for this the response. Uh, okay, and this also, hi, hi, I'm sorry. Fill parent. And even height also, I want to fill parent. And then I will put the response here inside this. So now I have a simple, see, I have a simple screen, okay, which has an input box. I have a button. Also, I have a, a text, a sample thing which says no response. But as soon as I uh, send some text here, I want to get the response from the AI chat GPT and then show that here in the space. Okay, that's what I want to do. How can I do it, first of all? First of all, I should add a chatbot here. You can see here there's something called experimental. Add the chat, chatbot here, okay? You can see that it's got added here, okay? I want to add also image bot. Image bot is all about for generating images. I will show you both, okay? How to generate <coughs> images as well as uh, text. We'll do both, okay? I have added chatbot and image bot. And if I come here, I think that's it, that's enough. 
yeah if i come here i there's something called blocks you see this block screen we are currently in design screen design screen is for designing the appearance of the app for writing the logic you have to go to block screen so if you go to block screen it'll come up here and then you can say like for example uh, i'll say if i click button one uh, i want to send i want to ask question to uh, chatbot and what question i want to take the question from text box i want to take the question from text box text okay so this is it so see it's simple logic building what what i mean here is when i click button one i want the, i want to take the text from text box and send it to chatbot as a question i hope you understand this right this is easy is basic basic logic building and then after getting the response after getting the response okay uh, i want to show that in the label right i want to show that here isn't it i want to show that here this is called label actually so i'll say here after getting the response i'll say i'll set label ones uh, that is what label is labels text value to the response i got so this is the response i got i'll do this that's it that's it you have built an ai tool you have built your own ai chat gpt see very quickly i i just i think i have spent only like five to ten minutes now see i just created the screens like this okay i just added a text box a button and a label here and arranged it using this layout part and then i just came up here and just gave two logics okay when i click button one uh, the text box uh, text should go to the chat bar. Then after getting the response, I'll I'll just set the response to the label. That's it. That's the logic. Now how to try this? For that, okay, let me. I have to mirror my. Let me mirror my uh, screen so that you will see my mobile phone. Okay, so one ninety two. Okay, one point three. Okay, I'm just mirroring my mobile screen. So we'll finish another two minutes, okay? That's it. So okay, I have my mobile phone now. You can see my mobile screen coming up. So okay, so there you have some. We have there's something called MIT App Inventor. I mean, a companion app which can actually transfer this app to your mobile phone. So I can just click scan QR code, okay? And it'll it'll start scanning. And after scanning, I can come here. And then click connect and a company will give a QR code. See, so it is. I have scanned the QR code now. So let's wait for some time. After I wait for some time, this app here, okay, this app we develop will transfer to will get transferred to my mobile. Let's see this mobile screen. I'll show you how. Okay, so you see that my mobile phone has the one I developed. So I developed this. This is what I developed, and I can see that in my mobile screen now. Let's ask some question. So I'll say that I'll ask the same question. What is black hole? Black hole. So let me type it. I just press the send button. You see that? I got the response. So it's like ChatGPT again. You have developed your own ChatGPT. I'll, I'll ask something else. Uh, so speak like Rajnikanth. Speak like Rajnikanth, maybe. I don't know. Rajnika, okay, listen carefully in the universe. There are two kinds of people those who stand in the shadow and watch. I don't know what dialogue it is. Say in Tamil, let's say. Say in Tamil. See, this is not that intelligent, okay? Not like ChatGPT. Okay, so we have exceeded my free usage. See, okay, you can't use, I, mean, I have been using it for many times, I guess. So I have exceeded my limit. Now, similarly, you can also, instead of having this uh, label, Okay, if I delete this, if I delete this, and instead of that, if I put some canvas here, also I'll show what canvas is. Canvas is a place where you can draw and show image. So I'll put a canvas here, and then I'll say just fill parent and even so whatever. I'll just fill parent. So this is a canvas now. A canvas is a place where you can show image or draw something. So what I'm going to do instead of asking some question and generating text, I'm going to generate images now. So I'll just come here uh, and say like, for example, uh, I don't need this now. Let me 
put this in the basket and i don't need this also and when i click button one i want uh to send the text box text okay uh to the okay to the image bot i'm sending the text to image bot now then after image is created okay i want to set the canvas background background image set the canvas background image uh to to the file name see simple just two logics so when i click the button whatever text is there in the text box send it to the image bot after the image was generates the image you just change the background image of the canvas which you just uh, added to the file name which is the actual image now let's try this okay let's say a dog with wings let's try it okay again i'm sorry <clears throat> so i have exceeded here let's uh is there any other let me try if you have it here i'll, I'll try to some other uh, my account okay i hope you understand this right so basically what i will be seeing here in my uh thing is what i'll be seeing here uh i mean in the screen is an image of a dog with wings okay that's what you'll be seeing okay, let's see taking time fine uh, see i'll show you the i'll show, i'll show you i mean share you the uh, video anyway i have this video in youtube so i'll try to share this uh, complete video to you in the group so that's it we'll wind up with this and as i told you those who want to actually sign up for the upcoming boot camp okay those want to sign up for the boot camp this is the i'll, I'll share you the link once again Okay, I don't. Uh... Okay. Is this the link? Once again. Once again, people. Let me check the link. Uh, is it right? Okay, it says AI bootcamp. I'm sorry. AI bootcamp. Still doubt I take expert training. What happened? Okay, it's working. What's on coming? IT expert, AI. Okay. It says boot comp. I'm sorry. They made a they made a spelling mistake. Okay. So this is the bootcamp I was telling you about. So uh, in this bootcamp, it's a five weekend bootcamp. Okay. What we'll do here is we'll develop five to uh, four tools actually. Now the reason for this bootcamp is to give you actual experience. On developing AI tools, just like how this Dimer dozen people did. Okay, we will create websites for all the tools we are going to develop. Okay, we will create four websites, integrating four AI tools. Okay, and we'll do from uh, we'll do it in the very scratch. We'll use Python for it. So uh, we'll start the Python basics in the next class. Okay, then each and every weekend we can develop each uh, four tools. We will develop uh, a financial advisor. Okay, which can help you. On finances, for example, it, it, you know what? There are systems which can help you come out of your debt. Okay, we'll we'll create something like that. For example, you may have some debt, you may have so much of loans and all that. And if you tell your AI system that you ha I have this much debt and loan, and my income is this much, I have this much expense, and this AI tool will tell will guide you on how to how you should spend things, how you can save money, how you can come out of debt and loans and all that. So that's kind of things we'll develop. And then we'll create an AI quiz generate and evaluator, something which, which you can use for uh, upskilling yourself. For example, if you're, if you're uh, uh, learning something, any skill or something, you want to evaluate yourself. 
it can ask questions, evaluate whatever you are answering, then tell you why it is wrong and right and wrong. And then we'll create something career, career advisor. So based on your experience, based on your studies, based on, based on whatever you're doing now, you may be a student or professional, uh, what are skills you have, it, this will guide you on prospective careers, uh, career, okay? And then tech China. So this is more like teaching you concepts from very basic. For example, you want to learn Python, this AI tool will teach you Python in, in a simple way, adapting to your, uh, your what to say, preferences. Okay, it will it will train in the way you like. So we'll we'll create these four tools in five weekends. Basically, basically we'll have first weekend for Python basics. Then the next four weekends we'll develop these four tools. So this is coming up. So I request, you know, if you want to really come up with a really good tool, uh, you can join this. And the charges for this we just charge like for nine nine nine. Okay. So I uh, see at least those people invested 15,000 rupees, okay, for time and uh, But this 9 in will help you generate a tool uh, which can generate a lot of revenue for you. Even we are developing an AI tool. Uh, we will launch it this month. Okay, we are developing two AI tools, one for students, other one for teachers. Okay, since we are in that domain, we are developing for them. And we'll be launching our own tools, AI tools, uh, either by this month or next month. We're, we're in the process of launching actually. Uh, I don't want to show that to you now. Right? It's a it's a surprise. So it has a lot of AI tools for students and there's other tool for teachers also. Now, since we are developing and since we are able to do what we want also you to do. It, OK, you can easily do what uh, if you know the basics, you can learn the other other things and by yourself and start developing it. OK, so let me share the link. I am sharing the link for registration in the chat. Uh, I will also share the link for registration in the uh, group. And if you're interested, uh, you can register for it. So let's wind up with this. How was the session? Please give your feedbacks. Uh, was the session useful? How do you feel of the session? Yes. You got new info about uh, different stuff. Or if you want to ask anything, you can ask me now. I can see in the chat how you how was the session, how your session was. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Even others, you know, uh, it's it'll be very useful if you tell me how the session was. You want to uh, ask me anything, you can ask if you have any doubts, any clarifications. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, Prashant. No doubt. Okay, great. Okay, which AI will be using? I will be using. I will. I'll show you how to use Chat GPT also. I'll show you how to use Gemini AI also. I'll also you show you how to use Hugging Face models also. So generally, you can. That's what I actually want to teach you. I want to teach you how to use. I want to go with paid paid uh, scheme. Uh, Gemini AI, which is both just both paid and free and opens the models which are there in hugging face. So in that case, you will be uh, able to choose which, are, which one you want to use for your own application. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Exactly, yeah. So we'll be using those to create our advisors, AI advisors. Okay, fine then. So uh, we'll wind up with this. Thanks for joining on a Sunday. Okay. Uh, and thanks for uh, joining even after uh, changing the time uh, due to circumstances. Anyways, so we'll, I'll see you on the session. Hope, hope you will all join. Uh, I'll send you the link in the group. Uh, make sure to join. See you uh, next week. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Uh, enjoy the remaining part of the weekend. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.